If you're looking for some new tasty pizzas, burgers, muffins, or even waffle iron baked omelets, then you better check out these chain restaurants that are poised to blow up in a big way. Tate Bakery & Cafe offers everything you love about a trusty cafe chain like Panera, with a chic yet cozy vibe evoking European coffee shops. Tate's tiled floor, lofty ceilings, and effortlessly posed pastries make it the kind of place you want to walk into with a novel under your arm. But there's more to Tate than style, as the food is pretty good as well. Tate's intellectual aesthetics are right at home in the Boston and DC metro areas, where it's been rapidly expanding. They serve full meals at reasonable prices, like roasted salmon with winter vegetables, braised short rib, and three kinds of shakshuka. That last one is a delicious North African dish of eggs atop a thick, flavorful sauce that's served with bread. Tate began in 2007, when owner Zarit Orr launched the business out of her home kitchen. Frozen custard, steak burgers, and shoestring french fries with a secret dipping sauce are the kinds of foods that teenagers were chowing down in the 1950s. But you don't need a time machine to enjoy these fast food classics if there's a Freddy's nearby. Freddy's frozen custard and steak burgers pays homage to mid-century America, even though they've only been around since 2002. It began in Wichita, Kansas, where it was founded by Scott Redler and brothers Bill and Randy Simon. It's named after Bill and Randy's father, a decorated World War II hero and veteran of the hospitality industry who passed away in 2020 at the age of 95. Freddy's built its brand on customer care, ensuring that every steak burger is cooked to order and seasoned to perfection. All beef hot dogs, crispy chicken sandwiches, chicken tenders, plus a collection of signature shakes, custards, and malts also speak to the restaurant's retro inspiration. A recent spike in expansion shows that the company's eyes are on the future, as Freddy's has exploded throughout the Midwest and South. It's also making its way up to the northern regions of both U.S. coasts and into Canada. When you want to feel like a genius, seriously, Freddy's must be the place. Lazy Dog founder and CEO Chris Sims was well-versed in the restaurant business when he opened the flagship location in Huntington Beach, California in 2003. The Lazy Dog culture was immediately defined by scratch-made meals and locally sourced, seasonal ingredients served in a stylishly rustic environment. Sims didn't invent the farm-to-table concept, but he was certainly one of the few turning it into a multi-chain operation in the early 2000s. The name Lazy Dog partly refers to the canine-friendly policy that's been a custom of the eatery since the beginning. Meanwhile, the menu offers a vast selection of homespun American eats with a contemporary twist. Think St. Louis-style ribs beside peanut sesame slaw and umami fries or lumberjack pancake tacos filled with bacon, candy, eggs, cheese, and hash browns. Lazy Dog's creativity ventures beyond its in-house menu. During the COVID-19 pandemic, it promoted a line of neo-retro TV dinners and a beer subscription program that are both still a big part of its business today. Innovation and culinary risk-taking are core principles behind this chain's business identity. Lazy Dog has consistently grown throughout California and expanded into several other states, if you've never visited a tropical smoothie cafe, chances are you will soon in 2024. It began as a single location on the beach in Destin, Florida in 1997 and expanded to Tallahassee the following year. It opened 141 new storefronts by the third quarter of 2023, bringing its total to 1,335 locations. And CEO Charles Watson has set his sights on reaching the big 1,500 by the end of 2024. Tropical Smoothie Cafe boasts a menu full of unique, fresh fruit smoothies and a line of somewhat health-conscious flatbreads, wraps, salads, and more. The power of franchising is a driving force behind its admirable expansion. 70% of the new locations are being opened by franchisees who already own at least one of the chain's existing locations. The expansion is also attributable to a knack for marketing, as well as a heart for the community. They also cultivate loyalty with occasions like National Flip-Flop Day on May 31st, during which every customer who enters the store wearing flip-flops gets a free smoothie. Yeah, and he's showing off his pedicure. <laughs> That's what he's doing right now. The Habit Burger Grill has been stoking the flame since 1969, and it's on the hot track to being everywhere in 2024. What started as a walk-up burger window in beachy Goleta, California, has become a multinational chain with over 330 posts between the U.S. and international locations like China and Cambodia. 
Many casual burger spots default to impersonal counter service and drive through windows to keep business moving. But that's not how Habit Burger Grill does business. Instead, it encourages customers to dine in. Although if you are on the go, it does offer a drive through self-ordering kiosks, and delivery. After all, it's a family-owned restaurant at heart. It wasn't until 2007 when the Habit Burger Grill decided to franchise in hopes of spreading its char-grilled patties beyond the Golden State. In 2020, it was purchased by Yum Brands, the juggernaut operation behind chains like KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Habit Burger Grill remains a cut above its fast food brethren by offering cooked-to-order burgers, chicken and steak sandwiches, and even ahi tuna, courtesy of its signature open flame grill. Expansion has been steadily moving forward, with locations regularly opening on the East Coast. Plans are in place to continue breaking ground in new territory. When Oprah Winfrey thinks something is cool, a lot of people tend to follow her example. So when she became an investor, board member, and consultant for health-minded restaurant chain True Food Kitchen in 2018, the buzz was immediate. By 2022, the stylish eatery had received another investment to the tune of $100 million, which would be used to expand on an even larger scale. Oprah's team reached out after the star dined in their Santa Monica location. True Food Kitchen is based in Phoenix, Arizona. Organic foods that are ethically sourced and in season are the name of the game here, and an open kitchen in each location shows off the preparation of scratch-made meals. Alongside a recent declaration that only avocado and olive oil will be used in True Food Kitchen's recipes, are plans to open a brand new restaurant in Raleigh, North Carolina's upscale North Hills District in 2024. This will be the chain's first location in that state. Vegan options, grass-fed beef burgers, and artisan pizzas with unexpected ingredients like butternut squash or smoked gouda are the kinds of meals you can expect here. And luckily for True Food Kitchen, consumer demand for healthy food that doesn't sacrifice flavor or creativity is sure to remain high in the near future. With a three-year growth rate of 170%, Teriyaki Madness just might become your new go-to for Asian food. The menu is pretty simple, with a selection of rice and soba noodle bowls with fresh vegetables and a choice of protein. Takeout-inspired sides like crab rangoon, chicken egg rolls, and chicken potstickers lend a comfort food vibe. Topping it all off are the sauces that are made in-house. The first Teriyaki Madness locations opened in Las Vegas back in 2003, where their wok-fried bowls and Seattle-style teriyaki sauce caught on well enough to let the franchising begin. Teriyaki Madness has already ventured beyond U.S. borders, first breaking ground in Canada in 2018 and opening over 65 outposts in Central America, with plans to add more in 2024. Overall, that makes for a current total of more than 130 locations. Since launching in Jacksonville, Florida in December 2012, Maple Street Biscuit Company has never looked back. Biscuits made from scratch every day are something you can count on at each of their 59 locations. And an extra touch of creativity really takes it to another level. In 2016, the chain got some TV exposure when one of their biscuit sandwiches called the Squawking Goat was featured on the Food Network show, Guilty Pleasures. I could eat it on a biscuit. Innovations like the Squawking Goat and Waffle Iron Baked Omelets caught the attention of Cracker Barrel, which purchased Maple Street Biscuit Company in 2019 for $36 million. Since then, Maple Street has nearly doubled its storefronts, with 26 new locations opening in less than four years. For now, they're largely concentrated in the South, but with multiple spots popping up in Ohio, new ventures in other parts of the country seem likely. Basing an entire restaurant concept around chicken salad might seem too simple, but the Alabama-based chicken salad chick suggests otherwise. Founder Stacy Brown based the idea on the fact that everyone's chicken salad preferences tend to be quite different. Her repertoire includes fruity and nutty, savory, spicy, and traditional flavors, sandwiches, salads, or just a scoop or two served with fresh fruit and crackers, all make for a satisfying lunch. Pimento cheese and egg salad are also on the menu for anyone who's not a fan of poultry. There are more than 230 chicken salad chicks dotting the Southeast. On the wings of a 20% increase since 2021, there are plans to open 18 future locations in Texas. New Mexico will get its first taste of the franchise in the spring of 2024 as part of a Southwest expansion plan that will include five future locations. 
With brunch culture showing no signs of slowing down, breakfast and lunch chain First Watch is reaping the benefits. It began in Pacific Grove, California as a single location back in 1983, when the focus was on fresh, seasonal foods and hours of operation that avoided late-night shifts for employees. In recent years, First Watch has expanded its presence in the fast casual market by 10% each year, and by the fall of 2023, its 500th location had opened. First Watch has also enjoyed plenty of accolades, including a placement in the top four of Yelp's most loved brands of 2023. It also made Newsweek's list of the 100 most loved workplaces in America in both 2022 and 2023, thanks to prioritizing employees' mental health and offering mentorship programs. Menu items like breakfast tacos, house-made granola, a fresh juice bar, and brunch cocktails demonstrate First Watch's artisanal appeal while demonstrating a clear understanding of what people want for breakfast. We don't want to be all things to all people. We want to really focus on breakfast, brunch, and lunch and do it really, really well. A successful chain starts with a clear vision, and in the case of Mod Pizza, that vision is focused as much on people as it is on making good food. Based in Seattle, Washington, Mod Pizza opened in 2008 and was community-minded from the get-go. It's known for hiring and retaining employees who face disadvantages in their job search due to criminal convictions, intellectual and developmental disabilities, or other barriers. This inclusive hiring process is the force behind the Mod Opportunity Network, which works with nonprofit organizations to connect employees with support systems to maintain long-term employment. It's the first program of its kind in the chain restaurant industry. Mod stands for Made On Demand, and Mod Pizza allows customers to customize their pizza with unlimited toppings at no extra cost. Rounding out the menu are options like salad, a side of garlic bread, dessert, and draft beer and wine. From 2014 to 2016, Mod Pizza grew from 31 to 190 locations. And as of 2023, the total stands at more than 550 spots in 29 states. Owners Allie and Scott Sevenson plan to increase that count to 1,000 units by 2024.